have some besties. I don't know about you, but I have been singing the soundtrack to Encanto like crazy the last few days. And I might have watched it like four times. Okay, fine, five. Antonio is just so stinking cute. But we don't talk about Bruno. Let's create a backdrop inspired by the movie. In, you guessed it, a hidden doll room. I'm using tan foam board because I still can't find white, but tan works for this room, so it's okay. Cut the foam board into two pieces, one that is 13 inches tall and another that is seven. My foam board is 30 inches wide. I flip the larger piece over, measure over 12 inches on the sides, score a line to make a trifold. On this side, score a line an inch and a half from the corner so the wall can open up. Take the seven inch piece of foam board, cut a 12 inch piece that can fit in the center, glue strips underneath to make a platform. I'm gonna cover it with this scrap of paper I bought a long time ago. Then glue it into the room. Cut another piece of foam board to fit this space. Cover with paper to make a floor extension. Now it looks like we have a little step. I wanna put a door on this wall and one right here. I cut paper for the base of the doors. Cut strips of cardstock. Glue layers onto the base for the door. I added strips on the sides, some taller rectangles in the center, a few details going across. Let's add a few strips around those rectangles. I cut another piece and draw a design. I use an X-Acto knife to very carefully and very slowly cut everything out. I framed it with more strips of paper and we're gonna assemble the door like this. Use a little paint to add some shadows and a little more texture to the door. I brush it with a little Mod Podge just to give it a little shine. I cut the plate for a doorknob out of black paper, brush it with a little gold paint, glue it on, glue black paper behind the cutout. Let's glue them onto the wall and I can see my measurements were off and my door is just a little too tall. I'm just gonna glue this piece on top of that one and it might hang over a little, but it should be okay. It doesn't have to be exact. We can take some artistic liberties. Let's use a push pin for a doorknob and I used a little glue to hold it in place. Brush it with a little paint to make it match. One door down, one to go. For this door, I have to make sure I don't make it too tall. We need space around the top for some decorations and it's on a platform. I cut a wood grain scrapbook paper to fit in the center. I have a half inch edge going all the way around. Let's flip it over and draw a design. Decide on what you would like to cut out. Carefully begin cutting on the lines. Then I'm going to tape it to gold foil paper using a little double-sided tape. Then carefully place it on the paper. All right, and we can just press down. Cut off the excess. All right, now we have a nice shiny door and we are going to glue this onto the purple or use double-sided tape, whatever is best for you. Then let's carefully center it on the cardstock. Grab a flower hole punch, or if you don't have one, you can always cut them by hand. I punch flowers out of the foil paper, a thin glitter paper. Ugh, okay, come on. Why is this one so difficult? <laughs> oh, this is sad. There we go. We got a few, and I did a chunkier glitter paper. Decorate the door with the cutouts. 
so it's all golden and sparkly. Begin framing it with the cardstock. Dry brush on a little paint. Brush on a little Mod Podge. Make a doorknob. I didn't worry about adding a lot of detail to the top because we are going to cover it. Glue the door onto the wall. This door is only 11 inches tall, so it is a little short, but it's all about getting the look. And for this look, we need lots of flowers. We can use artificial flowers and glue them around the door. Another option is to use our hole punches and make our own flowers or buy paper flowers. And these happen to be on clearance at Michael's. So yeah, this is what we're gonna do. And I bought these vases at Target a while ago at their value section at the front of the store for $3. They are perfect for going on the sides of her door. Glue the flowers around the door. I cut a wooden dowel to fit in each vase. I ball up a plastic bag and we're gonna place it on the end of the wooden dowel. Then wrap it with tissue paper. Secure with tape. Place it in the vase. Glue on flowers. When adding the flowers, I start with the largest ones first and then I fill in with the smaller ones. Two packs was enough for the door and the vases. I want to add a little something to this wall here. I'm going to glue on this scrap of paper with a stone print. Cut out a picture from some packaging. Add layers of cardstock to frame it. I'm adding a little ledge on the bottom to turn it into a window, giving us a view of Casita. Yeah, I know we're supposed to be in the house and so we can see the house through the window, but hey, this is Encanto. Anything can happen. I love it. Let's take a picture. Let's make our hot glue frames using a silicone mold. And I'm just gonna fill it with the hot glue. Once cooled, we can remove it, paint it, and cut out pictures to make family photos on the wall completing our Encanto inspired room. Well, hallway. We have the door for Mirabelle's room and Isabella's. Now we just need some dolls. I was looking through my doll stuff and I found these teal glasses. Now they're not bright green or round, but I think we could use them for an inspired look. You know, a little Disney bounding. I'm going to use the Rosa Parks doll for Mirabelle. She has a nice big smile, brown eyes, and her hair already stops at her shoulders with a little bit of curl. But of course, we need to switch her to a made to move body. I'm going to use this body. This is the Barbie soccer player originally. And I'm going to place both dolls into a plastic bag. Then I place the dolls into hot water until their heads have softened and are a little easier to remove. Place it onto the new body to increase the articulation. Now I'm going to use a skinny little curling iron. It's just a regular human curling iron where I can change the temperature. Keep in mind, curling your doll's hair with a curling iron can possibly destroy it. You've been warned. I combed her hair out first with The Juice by Kenny Doll 2017. I keep the temperature pretty low and I always test it in the back with a small piece of hair because not all doll hair is created equally. With the size of this curling iron, I can really only get like a bump to her hair, but yeah. Now let's pick out an inspired look. How about this teal satin skirt from Barbie Fashionista 29 paired with this black and white top? I don't know. I wouldn't mind a little more pattern on that skirt. What about this one? Okay, now this skirt isn't teal, it's more of a bright blue, but I'm loving all of the colors and the fullness of the skirt. I paired it with a white off the shoulder ruffle top. Let's add a brown bag and the glasses to complete her look. For Isabella, I think this made to move Barbie is a good choice. And please forgive me if I am pronouncing everything wrong. 
Let's just take her hair down, comb it out. We might even need to do a little hot water rinse. And I found this Barbie dress, which has ruffles and flowers. It just screams Issa. But I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of how the pattern doesn't continue around the back. What about this one? I really liked it when it came out. It's a deeper purple, but it does have flowers. Yeah, this is our Isabella. With this look, we get her sheer sleeves, just like her original outfit. We have purple and blue flowers, just like on her dress. Let's add a lavender purse, just to make sure we have that color in there and maybe some lavender boots. These match the purse perfectly, but these have flowers on them. Urgh. I'm going for the flowers. She's supposed to have a pink flower in her hair, so how about pink flower sunglasses? To finish our Isabella-inspired look. You know what? I totally forgot to give Mirabelle shoes. So we're gonna go with these pink Barbie flip-flops because I don't want to add any height to her. And as much as I love all that color in her skirt, I kind of think it needs to be teal. But that's just so plain, and Mirabelle has such a colorful personality. So what about some teal floral shorts? And I switched her glasses to these round clear ones. She had round glasses in the movie, and I felt like the other ones were just covering up too much of her face. And I found some strappy pink shoes that are still nice and flat, and they stay on better than the flip-flops. So we just completely changed her look. But hey, maybe she likes options. She can wear a skirt one day and shorts another. In the comments on Instagram, many of you requested Dolores. So we're going to use this So In Style doll because, yo, she's got the curls. I placed her on a made-to-move body. Then let's pull her hair up. Then I add a red plastic Barbie headband. It does have a little bow. Her colors are yellow and red. We can try out this Hello Kitty fashion pack. A pleated skirt that goes all the way around with yellow, red, and orange but it does have blue. And her top really should be yellow. There is this yellow top, but I kind of feel like we do need to get rid of that blue. I found this solid red pleated skirt. It's from a DC superhero pack. That could be a look. Or we can pair it with this white ruffle shirt, which I kind of like. Then bring in this yellow lace cardigan, allowing us to bring in that touch of yellow. I gave her red shoes, a yellow bag, and instead of a red choker, I'm going with red headphones. You know, like noise-canceling headphones for when she needs a little peace and quiet. Completing our Dolores-inspired look. I love Disney bounding with dolls, and I loved Encanto. Abuela was the light in the darkness, and Mirabelle is the thread that holds the family together. Beautiful movie. I have officially seen it now nine times because I've been watching it while crafting. The dolls by Jax Pacific totally fit in our space. Mirabelle has her beautiful green glasses, a white top with lots of printed embroidery work, a long teal skirt with printed images, and it does go all the way around, except for the waistband. She has the basic five points of articulation with movement at the head, nice rotation there, movement at the shoulder, and at the hip. And it's pretty easy to balance her to stand. Her sister is taller. I do like that height difference. She has long black hair, a lavender dress with see-through sleeves, lots of ruffles, a flower print going down the dress, we have a couple of layers in the front that do not continue around the back. And it looks like the Barbies could totally fit these dresses. Yes, they can. 
it actually fits pretty good. I mean, it's a little loose, but that just means it's more comfortable. Here is Isabella giving us an authentic movie look. Thank you for joining us while we made an Encanto inspired background and played with some dolls. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at My Froggy Stuff and The Frog Vlog and Bella of My Froggy Stuff. And we will see you next time. Bye! You know that you're beautiful. Just the way you are